So, <clears throat> we are live. Oh, I got to open live chat. Remember to guard your privacy and abide by our community rules. First time I got that. Uh, and what are we doing here tonight? Well, tonight I am unboxing my Arrow videos. So if you guys can see in the background right there, <clears throat> I have a full shelf of Arrow video titles. Uh, everything from Herschel Gordon Lewis's Feast to... Uh, to Russ Meyer's collection, to a bunch of like box sets, and uh, a lot of different Arrow stuff, be it Blu-ray, DVD. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Arrow Video, and tonight I am go I have what was originally supposed to be 14, but I got 15 titles to show you guys from uh, from the Arrow Video show. So I've opened up my bubbly, and just so you guys can see. <clears throat> This actually came really well done. It was a box inside of a box, right? So, hey, Corey, how's it going? So I got my Arrow stuff. Uh, so this is the box inside of the box. It was actually really well packaged. Um, and this came, like, super fast. Uh, it was no time from when I uh, <coughs> said, uh, you know, from when they said it was gonna, that it was shipped out. I paid the, the extra couple pounds for shipping. Hey, De De Katana, uh, I've got my Arrow stuff. <coughs> so... I'm not sure where to start. I've got more DVD than Blu-ray actually this time around because I was actually trying to get certain ones. So Arrow took on the, the mantle of pretty much of, the, of selling for uh, for Shameless. They, uh, they're the uh, company that sells the Shameless stuff as well. So there's actually is an Arrow and Shameless uh, set. So I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go into the Blu-rays or DVDs first. Now, this one is actually kind of neat here. And... I didn't know this was a company that uh, worked with uh, with Arrow, but uh, I'm guessing they they do, and that is Revolver. So, has anybody seen this movie here? So it's a very different type of film. Uh, I'm not sure if it's skit or skeet. Like skeet is a word in uh, in, in Newfoundland, and uh, this means something different than actually it does here. Uh, but it's kind of like a uh, yeah, like me, this was kind of a, this was like their, the, the bonus, the bonus one that they, that they put in there. I'm actually really kind of curious about it. I've, I've never seen it. <clears throat> so, uh, they sent a bonus this, this, this time around, which was actually really cool. And, uh, it has like, uh, like some features on it. Like it's got a documentary behind the scenes of the premiere of the film, Q and A with the director and cast. Um, so, and it's got a really weird, like slip cover because normally you don't see the slip cover, like. Like the this here case is like bigger than the slip cover is. Notice that? Isn't that kind of different? But anyway, apparently this is a film about uh kind of a revenge film. Uh so apparently controversial crime thriller. I'm looking forward to checking it out. Uh not one that I that I knew much about, but uh, one I'm gonna really be interested in seeing. Um now let's do the Blu-rays or the DVD first? Let's do the Blu-rays first. And then we'll go to the DVDs. Because I have certain ones that I picked up for certain specific reasons. Now, if you guys know me, I got the Nakatsu Diamond Guys Volume 1. And I'm, I'm a big fan of like uh, of Japanese cinema and, and the uh, Nakatsu, the, uh, the company. Uh, so uh, I had to grab this one. This is the Nakatsu Diamond Guys Volume 2. I wanted to have them both, you know, while they're still in print. These are both limited editions. And uh, this one has the uh, Tokyo Muddy Guys. You can see right there, Danger, Days, and Murder Incorporated. So some really cool titles. And uh, I think uh, most of, not all of these are in color. Uh, the last set had like one that was in black and white. At least one that was in black and white. Maybe two. I got to remember. It's been a while since I watched it. Um, but uh, definitely, as I go through, I guess we'll open these up. Did I ever hear of the guinea pigs here? I have. I, uh, I've actually seen them like a long time ago. But uh, if you're into the gore stuff, uh, definitely. That's the, but for me, it wasn't ever my thing. I never really got stuck on it. Never really got into the guinea pig series that much. And I, I think now as, as I'm older, I, uh, I probably like really wouldn't get into it right now. I like that Arrow has this like here thing here. It looks like a cigarette thing that uh, to open up the, uh, the cases. But I find it really hard to find out exactly where the hell you're supposed to start on these here uh releases where the where the because on cigarette things you can actually see like a tab i'm just trying to see if there's any type of tab here that's gonna like uh see it should be right in the middle here 
See, I should have brought down. Where's my knife? Pat? I got this little knife that I use for this type of stuff, which I can't see right now. And I do apologize, but I'm going to try and get this open so you guys can see exactly what it looks like on the inside. If there's any, if there's a booklet, that type of thing. If there's a, uh, if there's reversible artwork, I want to be able to do that with you guys here as well. So bear with me. It'll be worth it because we'll actually get to see. We're not just going to look at it and just we're going to look at it and see exactly like how the uh, package looks inside as well. Arrow's really good at putting together like things, reversible artwork, uh, booklets, all that type of stuff. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the uh, the booklets and stuff that Arrow does. So. So, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so this one here has like a Blu-ray and, and two DVDs. So the three movies are on, on Blu-ray, or you can act actually have them on thrown, like basically Tokyo, Mighty Guy, and Danger Pays, and Murder Incorporated with the, uh, with, with the features on the bonus disc. So this is the reversible sleeve. I like I like this one better. I like the artwork better. I can see how some people would actually be into that one though. So no uh has a, a pretty big booklet on here. But uh looks to be a fun set. And let's see who did the writing on this stuff. We got writing from Tom Mess, Mark Schilling, and Stuart Galbarth the Fourth. So, should be interesting looking at that. <clears throat> I guess I should have opened up Skeet to show you what, guys what that looked like. So, we'll, uh, we'll do that now as well. I just missed something somebody said down there. Please feel free to put it in there again. Now, I love this. I didn't think I was going to, but I actually kind of dig this cover. Uh, it's uh, very, very different. <clears throat> so, this one here, for instance, okay. So, the case has got a texture to it not really a booklet more of like a you know kind of a you know promotional thing for the movie and like other stuff by the company this was put up by revolver entertainment actually i got my arrow ones and you haven't missed much tummy i just uh got skeet right here skeet sket i'm not sure how it's pronounced uh i'm gonna go skeet <laughs> And uh, I've got the Nakatsu Diamond Guys Volume 2, which now means I got both volumes of Nakatsu Diamond Guys. Super stoked to get that. There are 15 titles in all that I'm going to be opening up and showing you guys tonight. Next up is I like the Neo Noir type of films, and I had to pick this one up. When I went to put it in the cart, it was on limited availability. I'm not sure if that meant that they just didn't have many in stock or, you know, it's one that's not coming back. Uh, not quite sure what limited availability means. If anybody can like shine a light on that you can let me know but uh mike figs stormy monday and uh again love uh remember this movie from when i was younger i do really like it you know very young sean bean in here uh, of course uh you know we have tommy lee jones uh sting is you know it was fantastic in this and of course that is oh my god melanie griffith right it is melanie griffith yeah okay it is melanie griffith i'd make sure but um I've been wanting to get this one for a while. I love the cover art on, uh, on Stormy Monday. And I watched the trailer. And as soon as I watched the trailer, I was like, I had it in my cart. And I was like, going to take it out for a horror title. <clears throat> and I said, you know, i got to get some more horror titles. You know, i got to represent. But uh, I watched the trailer for this one. And I said, yeah, no, i got to have this movie. Uh, again, like uh, feature-wise, there's a video appreciation by uh, critic Neil Young. And there's like a then and now like a tour of the Newcastle locations. So kind of like, oh, I guess uh, for you North American people here, it's kind of like the Horrors Hollowed Grounds uh, uh, thing. And uh, we got some reversible cover art here. So let's just see what the cover art is on the other side. Oh, yeah. I, now, see, I remember this cover. Art. I'm a huge fan of the neo-noir genre. I'm a fan of the noir genre. And, uh, and you know, one of my favorite movies is... Uh, this is for tickets. Uh, hello, Kookaboo. There go. This is like a super young Sean Bean, guys. Like, look, that's that's Sean Bean. This is the guy that like, I wonder if he dies in this. He like he dies in everything. I, I cannot remember. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, that's kind of Sean Bean's thing, isn't it? 
So next up is a, is a black exploitation one. You guys know we I love my black exploitation, uh, and uh, kind of a fun cheesy one. This one was done by uh, was this done by Hill? Or, no, it's not. Eddie Romero. Oh, there aren't many tickets left at the at the price or in that section. Ah. Okay, limited availability on on this website. I'm guessing that means there wasn't like, like a lot left at that price. Then, so I'm glad I grabbed these then, because uh, some of these here do, did have like limited availability when I put them in my cart. And if you go to, because the sale's still going on right now, it's actually uh, it's on to the ninth. So uh, actually, uh, 101 Films actually the uh, did their sale like they expanded as well. So I've got Black Mama, White Mama, and uh, actually kind of cool to have this because it's done by Eddie Ramiro. And if you've got the Blood Island like set the that came out there by Severin. Well, great set, by the way. Um, then uh, definitely uh, check out this one. Uh, this one right here. It's by the same director, actually. So this was actually done in the Philippines. They did like a lot of those, like of, like movies shot in the Philippines to, because uh, it was like it was like cheap to uh, do there and like had like really nice like. Uh, well, I love this. I actually this one's actually opening right. And this is Pam Greer. For me, uh, it took this one about four days. Uh, I took the uh, black exploitation film, yeah. Oh, I know, everybody got this at each I can't, unfortunately, tell me. It took about four days. Uh, it only t was only $2 extra to get, like, uh, tracked shipping. And, uh, yeah, it was really quick. So it was around four days to get all these here to me. It was in a huge-ass box. It was waiting at my doorstep. My uh, I was wor at work. My better half actually brought it in. So Black Mama, White Mama is, of course, the fantastic Pam Greer. Uh, you know, my favorite movie by her is Coffee. Um, Foxy Brown is a close second. So this has, like, a, some, some decent stuff on here. We got, like, audio commentary with the filmmaker. We got, like, interview with uh, Margaret Markoff. That's the, uh, her here, her there. Uh, we also have, like, a Sid Haig interview on here as well and the Mad Doctor of Blood Island. So we got an a, uh, interview with Eddie Romero. Now, I actually do have the Blood Island set, uh, like, I, I ordered it, but uh, it keeps saying that it's, uh, just not, if you try, it only takes a couple, like, extra pounds, like, you know, five dollars more for the track shipping, and if you do that, I find it makes a massive difference. Uh, I, it took me forever to get these before, and since we've gone into the, into the, uh, into the other bigger shipping, man, I love this art, artwork. Okay, so, look at this. So this here case, this here, just the disc itself, is kind of neat. Love this, uh, the artwork on the disc. Very different. I love the in interior artwork. This is the first one where I really like the interior artwork as well. Chicks and chains. Super cool. I'm super glad to have this one now. It's one that I'm going to definitely be, uh, be uh, watching very soon. Black Mama, White Mama. You know, it's like the Defiant ones, but Ghost of Mars. You really? See, I'm not a big Ghost of Mars fan. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, uh, no, no, this is just like what I, this is like uh, my uh, era of Christmas sale. Still going on right now. Got a few, four Tinto Brass films. Nice. I'm a huge Tinto Brass fan, and you may find that out actually very soon. <clears throat> I actually got a tin breath set over there uh, from uh, Cult Labs uh, that uh, I was really excited to get. So recently, I got a, uh, a package from uh, from James, and in it, I checked out some, but I haven't checked it all. So I'm I'm going to be diving more into them because I have tomorrow off, and I did like what I saw. And if you if you haven't checked it out, guys, check it out. Always feel free to pimp your stuff, man. Um, so this one here is a. Uh, by a specific director that I really like. I actually recently got one of his films from James, and, the, and that's Nico Mastarakis. Uh, this is Hard to Kill. He did, of course, uh, Zero Boys, and uh, he did, also did a movie called All End of Death, which is not everybody's uh, cup of tea. I'll tell you that much for sure. Uh, mostly because there's like a couple sequences, and especially one with a fake goat. Uh, you'd have to see it to understand what I'm talking about. And then you might not like me for it uh, for a second. <laughs> But it's not in this movie. <laughs> this actually has Brian Thompson as a good guy. He's normally an actor that you see play bad guy roles. He's got that kind of like kind of the face for uh, for bad guy roles. Um, 
again, like a lot of great stuff on here. We got a brand new commentary with editor uh, Barry Zetlin, hired to, di to direct, a brand new interview with director Nico Mastrakis, undercover mercenary, an interview with Brian Thompson. Um, let's open it up here and see if we got like a. So, yeah, there's a. Oops. Oh, this one. It's a little bit on the loose side. It's a two disc set, by the way. <laughs> Island of Death. Uh, it's paperback. <laughs> It's, it's a different one. Like Arrow put it out, the DVD actually has more features than the Blu-ray has. Just a heads up if you can get the DVD of Island of Death. Uh, there's more features on I think they lost the right to a feature on the uh, Blu-ray. Uh, so I've never upgraded. I've actually kept it on DVD. So I love this hard to get. Look at that, man. Isn't that cool? And Oliver Reed, of course. There's Oliver Reed. I'm pretty sure it's Oliver Reed. And four. So yeah, actually, some pretty cool stuff this time around. Um, and that is, by the way, the uh, alternate artwork. Oh, did you really? Uh, I got mine from Arrow. It had, it had like basically had like just you know the normal white cover, uh, like they used to have back in the day. Banned in twenty three countries. Now one more in the. <laughs> this is a cross between black exploitation and horror, and it's actually a really cool movie. Uh, this was kind of my, my big horror Blu-ray buy for this time around, which actually is going to be really surprising for people. Uh, and that is JD's Revenge. I love Glenn Truman. Uh, Glenn Truman and uh, he does a really, really good job in this film. This has a great cast, by the way. Oh, Louis Gossett Jr. is in this movie here as well. Um, we got, uh, you know, directed by Anthony Marks, the guy that did like uh, Bucktown and Friday Foster. Uh, brand new retrospective documentary on the making of the film. Uh, talking with a bunch of people here a lot of J.D. Walker rare audio interview with the actor David McKnight uh, just a bunch of different stuff on here hey boredom how's it going I am looking at my uh, my Arrow stuff that I got today the Arrow Christmas Halo is still going on right now by the way guys so if you haven't checked it out yet I know a lot of you guys probably have got a got a few releases since the sale has been going on but uh, I could only afford to get like uh, get 14 this time around well 15 titles all together so this is the inside. I'm not. I'm noticing that I never got any of the uh, the uh, postcards this time around. So let's look at the reversible cover art here, and it's the art that I'm used to actually. Uh, I want to spend money there, but my better half is like, we've spent so much money in the last thing. I got some Warren Archives titles coming from oldies.com, actually. They're, they're taking forever to get here. All right. So, we're going to get into the uh, to the DVD stuff. And uh, don't think because the DVD stuff, it's lesser stuff. Actually, for me, some of the best stuff that I got this time around is, are, is DVD releases. Uh, this one I got kind of like for me and my better half because we love cheesy bad action films. And we've been like had this in our cart so many different times during sales. And the uh, last couple times it wasn't on sale. So uh, this time it was back in the sale again. And that is uh, Snuff. Okay, I remember that one. This is Jaguar Lips. I'm a huge Arrow fan. Okay, look at this cover, man. You got like Christopher Lee, Donald Pleasance. Uh... There's the lady there. It's a guy on a motorcycle. Joe Lewis is doing some stuff. We have a helicopter up there. There's a lot going on here, man. Uh, actually, I think they do. I uh, I was surprised because I looked at their uh, at their shipping, uh, and they did have like a shipping uh, prices to Canada. So uh, that was really surprising. I didn't think that they shipped to uh, Canada. I actually thought that was the reason that I've never ordered from them before, was that they didn't ship to Canada. But I, I noticed that they had uh, like a. Oh, actually, this has a. Okay, so this has a. As a booklet, I'm really surprised about that. Uh, this is like an earlier like Arrow release, and this one was only available on DVD. It's a fun movie. I mean, it's got like just you know, got like a booklet here and interviews with like uh, Joe Lewis and. Uh... So this is an old school Arrow booklet, guys. It's it's super cool that these are still around. Uh... Yeah, this is wow. This is like taking me back a bit. This is like the arrow booklets of like of of yesteryear, uh, which I always thought were super cool. 
So uh, that's that's kind of neat. It's actually a pretty big booklet uh, for like the old school ones. I know it's like, you know, it's kind of tiny like that, but uh, really super excited to see that actually. So uh, I'm sorry I'm geeking out a bit, but uh, it's not something I expected to see. Now, even the DVD ones had like uh, alternate artwork. So I'll show you because they actually has, this has actually has some really cool alternate artwork. So if you're a fan of like cheesy action movies, uh, then, you know, Jaguar Lives definitely is one of those cheesy kind of fun Z-grade action movies that you put on. You, uh, you know, your brain like takes a vacation. You just have some fun with it. Yeah, it, it's, it's a fun film. Don't expect good acting from the lead actor. He's, uh, he's really not that, he's not that charismatic of a guy, but it's a very fun film. And Christopher Lee and Donald Pleasance definitely make up for any shortcomings that he may have. Uh, so the next one is a controversial film. <clears throat> and uh, it was on limited availability. I was worried that this one was going to go out uh, before I actually got a chance to get it. I saw this movie a long time ago. I haven't seen it for a, lo for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Actually, it was. It, it's the real deal. We can actually really do the stuff. Uh, but uh, kind of like uh, it can be a bit. The action scenes are fun. He's, he's not the best actor in the world, but he does think a lot of himself. I've seen him in interviews before, so this interview should be hilarious because I'm sure he's going to like extol his virtues to the nth degree, and those are always fun. <clears throat> so this one here is a controversial film, uh, and I'm not. Uh, so this is the uh, the film. If you've seen it, you know you know why, and uh, it is a pretty intense film. But definitely, it's not for a younger audience. And uh, even even the title itself was actually kind of like uh, caused a bit of controversy back in the uh, back in the day. But uh, it's a really good film. Yeah, did you like it, Dekatana? See, I I really did like this movie when I saw it, and it's been a long time since I've seen it, so I'm hoping it's going to hold up to the uh, to the test of time uh, <laughs> but if you know what the title means uh, there's actually kind of a it, it can be interpreted a couple ways but uh pretty obvious what it means here let's see what we got okay so I finally get a card uh, so I get the card for Bloodbath, a movie which I do have. If you didn't get the Bloodbath set when it came out, I really strongly recommend it. There's a great, like, uh, like two-hour-long documentary. I think it was done by Tim Lucas, and uh, Tim Lucas is, does incredible stuff. So, so uh, kind of a cool card. But what's neat about this one, and I did not know this, but I, there, this one actually does have a booklet too. So let's like take it out. So I'm not sure. I got to look in the booklet before I. Uh, and see if it can be can it be shown. Yeah, so okay. And like uh this was a shameless release, there'd be nude DL over it. <laughs> so like if you know shameless, they they would like heighten like the nude aspect of it. So let me see if there's another artwork on the other side. So yeah, so basically it's the same art that you see on the booklet there. Uh, now there is like features on this is like a 40 minute like making of documentary. So uh, which should be interesting to uh, to check out. I hope, hopefully it'll go into the controversy of the film. A kiss? Not, uh, uh, not what this means, but... <laughs> it's French. Hey, I am doing <clears throat> some uh, stuff here. So, I've got four more arrows to go. Uh, this is one that I, hey, Cubic Lover, I've been showing some Arrow stuff. I just showed, uh, I'm not sure if from here, but this movie right here. So this one was what I, one I needed to actually complete my uh, my collection. If you look behind me there, you can see, and it's a very noticeable Russ Meyer set. Uh, but I was missing something from my Russ Meyer collection, and that is the, the seven minutes. Uh, which actually is kind of more... Uh, N not as a what's the word it's not the typical Russ Meyer film it's kind of a courtroom film not what you normally see what you expect when you get like a lot of Russ Meyer movies now Edie Williams is in this so you know we got like one of the Russ Meyer stale works in it 
we'll check here and see if there's like any like interior or like artwork or any booklets or anything like that. This originally came uh, with the, uh, I think this is loose here, so I gotta get this. Nope, it's just the art card. So it came with an art card here and that's for the uh, 2000 Maniac. So I'm actually kind of glad I got the art card here for this one. I love this. I'm a huge Hershey Gordon Lewis fan. Uh, yeah, well, he did. I mean, like, Russ Meyer started doing the gore stuff, actually, uh, De Katana. Uh, and, uh, but he went into, uh, into like, the nudie cuties, and he did did them really well. And, of course, he did, like, the more, uh, he did, like, stuff with uh, kind of, like, a social commentary. So, Russ Meyer is kind of, like, if you took, like, the, the average, like, nudie cutie, like, like exploitation type of film, and you put kind of some of, like, Larry Cohen's social commentary in it, uh, that's kind of what you get when you, uh, when you think of Russ Meyer. Yeah, I get, that's the best way I can put it. So, this is kind of a neat cover. Uh, this looks like something, though, that, uh, why is the seven minutes the most exciting experience in a woman's life? When it's done like that, it's like, you know, Russ and Mars marketing a movie that my mom would watch or something like that, which uh, I don't think she would. If she picked it up with that cover, I'm sure she probably would, actually. <clears throat> okay, so I am a huge fan of a certain director. I've been wanting to get his mo his movies uh, for a while. I've got like a, a box set with a lot of his stuff on it. So uh, let's get into the first one, and that is uh, Frivolous Lola, Tinto Brass. I am a huge Tinto Brass fan. And every sale comes, I'm, I always say, I got the Tinto Brass collection up there, the, the Cult Labs one over there, but I want the other ones that I don't have. <laughs> Actually, De Catana, you're, you've never seen a restaurant movie? You, you owe it to yourself, man. Watch Vixen or... Be, Beyond the Valley of the Ultra Victions, or Cherry, Harry, and Raquel. That's a good one. Um, so, yeah, so Tinto Brass really is. When you said that ass, that's, that's actually not really that, that, that much of a joke. He really was into, he likes butts, and he cannot lie. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that, that's actually, that is a true statement, statement of fact. Tinto Brass was definitely a butt guy. I so want to get this open. I don't sure if these have, bo have booklets or not. They were all on Blu-ray too, and I thought, do I want the Blu-ray or the DVD for this one? And uh, for this, I went for I went for the uh, I went for the DVD. I w I've got like a lot of, with the newer stuff, like a lot of the newer Arrow stuff. I always I usually always go for the blue, but uh, when it comes for some of the older stuff, I want like to have a I want to have a large collection of, of Arrow, both on Blu-ray and on DVD. Uh, some people only buy Blu-ray. That's that's not me. That'll never be uh, that that'll never be me. Uh, I love I love having the different uh, the different formats. And certain movies just like shine in, in certain formats. This was like four pounds, by the way, guys. So I'm not sure if I can show you the back the other cover on this one, which I'm guessing is going to be this, but not in artworks. Okay, so I guess I guess I can kind of show it. Yeah, but I don't sell my stuff <laughs> ever. <laughs> if I'm buying something uh, for my collection, man, that's staying there. <clears throat> like if you buy like the resale and stuff like that, uh, I I gotta. <clears throat> and I'm like a different format. I still have a serious love for uh, for DVD. <clears throat> I really like you know I, I I can't lie I got I do have a serious love for the DVD format and I love the uh, the covers. Now this here is the first Tinto Brass movie that I ever saw and it's probably the one that made me like a huge fan of Tinto Brass in the first place. I watched this movie before it ever came out, so I watched it through nefarious purposes back in the early days. Ah, nice to see you, See we. That's the thing. You can't be when you love movies. You got to go past the format. You, you can't just stick with one format. You love you love film itself, uh, and that you know that's the way I see it anyway. Uh, but this one here called "All Ladies Do It." Uh, this again, uh, you know, there's a but at the end. This one. Uh, this was the first Tino Brass movie I ever saw. It actually made me kind of like really fall in love with his with his style of cinema. Uh, I'd seen this like way before I like knew Tino Brass was what Caligula was. I think I'd like seen Caligula, but I never knew it was. Like who was who was involved? I didn't know like Tinto Brass was the guy that did it, and I didn't know that, that was like a, that he was this like kind of artistic director and Caligula, which was a huge movie, actually hurt his career. Um, 
but uh, you know, these here don't have like uh, really any features on them. Like the Russ Meyer one had an interview with Russ Meyer, uh, but this one here, Tindall Brass one, and let's see if I can share the other cover. <laughs> Not really. Uh, so, <laughs> but it's the French cover. If you uh, if you buy these. Not, not normally. Like some, I will buy. Like I'll buy like uh, Black Christmas and uh, uh, things like that, in like in different formats if there's different features. But these here, I don't own in any format. Uh, so uh, you know, I've got some Tino Brass films, but the ones that I'm showing you aren't ones that are in my uh, Tino Brass collection that I got from Cult Labs. Uh, these actually kind of fill out. Uh, so I think there's maybe a couple more Tino Brass ones that I need. Like, uh, oh God, I can't remember the name right now, but. Uh, all Ladies Do It is one of my favorites. All Ladies Do It and Cheeky are two of my favorite Tino Brass films. So if you're familiar with both of those movies, uh, then you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now, one that he was like kind of famous for, Black Christmas. Nice. That is a fantastic release. I don't have it yet, by the way. I just have the uh, Canadian edition of Black Christmas, the Season's Grievings edition. Uh, and I want to get the Scream Factory one, and I do want to get the 101 Films one as well, which has a very unique cover. I really like that. And if you just came in, one on one films extended. So this is the one I can actually show you. Uh, so this is the key. This is probably one of the most famous Tinto Brass films that that, ever, that was ever made. Uh, and a great cast in this one here too. Uh, Frank Finley actually is in this movie. And uh, if you don't if you don't know who Frank Finley is by by me just saying the name, seriously, like just IMD Frank Finley, you will have seen him in other movies. Uh, so, uh, Stefiana Sandrelli is in this. Um, yeah, there are some big like people in this, and the score is done by Eno Marconi. Uh, so yeah, a lot of big people worked on the uh, on the key. It's a very different, very unique film, and uh, it's a very uh, artistically known. So uh, this is the key right here. It is a beautiful film. Tino Bass is a great like a uh, great filmmaker. The cinematography in his films in his films are really really stunning. So uh, <clears throat> that I've, I'm very much interested in seeing. Now, what have I got left? I have some Shameless because Shameless is now part of the of the Arrow of Arrow. Arrow puts out Shameless stuff. So super excited. So the first one we're going to look at, and I I got to take off the the plastic so we can see this one uh, the way that it should be seen. And I'm super excited about this. So. It's just a silly gimmick on the cover, but this was like five pounds, and man, I'm a I'm a big fan of the. Uh, I, I like these films, and obviously I love this director. Uh, I really, really love this director, and uh, this is Lucio Fulci's Contraband. So if you look there, you can see there's like on the lenticular cover, blowing his brains out. Are you like licking that there? Don't go licking that, silly cat. Isn't that awesome though? Like, come on. Like, would you not buy this for five pounds, guys? Seriously. And actually, it's a pretty good film. It's a Lucio Fulci film. It's not a horror film. It's actually. Hey, Henderson Wizard, how's it going? Hey, T Money. <clears throat> yeah, uh, this super cool cover. It's the. Uh, uh, now there's a. Uh, not sure if there's anything on the inside. There's like a an alternate artwork, but I don't want to take it out because it's gonna bring this out. I'm gonna see if you can see it through here. Uh, but it's kind of like, you know, you can get the gist of it. But there's no way I'm changing that alternate artwork, man. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I I just went through that. Uh, so I my heart and thoughts go with you, man. Uh, when I Anytime when it's a, a an animal, that's that's my they're my uh, they're my they're my world. So I, I do seriously. Um, that is something I don't want to say. Just I'm thinking of you. Uh, think of all the good times with them. That's uh that's 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 what I had to do. I recently lost a cat actually. <clears throat> but I'm going to give you shiny stuff there. Shiny shiny movie covers that. Uh, Hopefully, you know, <clears throat> but this one here is the, the smuggler and it is like basically it's a uh, they, they do the evil thing of like I can't like share the back of this because we know what Shamus does, right? Nudity in the movie. It's on the back of the box. Um, now that would show the versatile cover as well. 
but uh you know fabio testi is in this one here uh you know definitely has got some gore in here this is like lucha fulci you know the godfather gore so uh and this is a limited number to edition one. Oh yeah so this is 1680 of 2000 so there's only 2000 of these made guys and this is on sale right now for uh at the uh until like the until the ninth <clears throat> So I got two more to show you guys, and uh, both of these were first time in the, on DVD in the UK and Blu-ray. And uh, these are ones where I will grab the Blu-rays too down the road for of the other companies that put them out. But I want to grab the DVDs of this. Oh uh, yeah, the Italian Godfather Gore. I I represent Hersh Gordon Lewis. I got him right over there. Say, <laughs> but the Italian Godfather Gore would be like a Lucio Fulci. Okay, I gotta be like, kind of like, careful with these shameless covers. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to cover my finger carefully over this one. So this is the church. And this was put out again by uh, James. I love this artwork. What I'm covering there is like, is there's a female breast, like it's even though it's only a drawing. Uh, and this one here has the uh, longest version English version of the film as well and the Italian version with first ever English subtitles actually I like the church I, I know I know you're not a big fan of the church but it's one that I always have uh, that I've always had a lot of fun with and uh, I think Isaiah is like really young in this right she's like she is in the film that's the original like kind of the one that you're used to seeing right there Sure, it's at Gates of Hell. Uh, well, when I think of Gates of Hell, I kind of think of like the the Fulci trilogy. This is my Michael uh, Sauvé. Uh, so, so, and uh, he's the guy that did Stage Fright. If you ever saw the movie Stage Fright, he uh, he, he directed that. <clears throat> and I have one more title to show you guys. And actually, it's a really cool one. It was actually put out by another company, Demons Three. Thank you, K Dog. You're right, actually. It's one of the many Demons 3 out there. But for me, it's the closest to an actually being actually Demons 3, right? So I have one more Shameless Edition to show you, and this one's the Shameless Fan Edition. Uh, first time in the uh, in the uh, UK, and I may actually be getting another edition of this one, by the way. Just putting that out there. But I did not like know that at the time that I ordered this. But it's okay because that's cool to have like different editions of, uh, of films. And this is Sergio Martino, one of my favorite Italian directors, by the way. And that is All the Colors of the Dark. Uh, All the Colors of the Dark. So basically, he uh, Martino is the guy that uh, that did the... Oh, God. So many. Uh, Top Sensation. Strange Vices of Miss Ward uh, is like my my favorite that he that he did. That, that would, That's what I would consider like... People, some say, people say the other ones, but uh, Strange Vice Miss War is my favorite. But All Colors of Dark, again, is a, is a fantastic film. Uh, recently being put up by Severin, actually, on a, on a Blu-ray with a very special edition, which I, I strongly uh, recommend you guys checking out. But if you've never seen, like, All Colors of Dark, or you've never seen a Sergio Martino film, and you want to kind of, like, get into, dip your toes into, like, the, uh, into the giallo genre, and you've never done it before, this one here is actually four pounds right now. On, uh, at the at the Arrow Christmas sale, so four pounds is really good, and this one actually has some stuff on it. We got a, a new Sergio Martino interview, uh, auto commentary with by Kate Ellinger and Sam Digan, uh, Doors and a war winning short by Mikel DeAngelis. Um, so yeah, it's uh, uncut in uh, for the first time. It's on it's both on DVD and Blu-ray at a uh, there. Now th that being said, there is like a a, a very special edition put out recently by uh, by Severn Films. And if you do like this film already and you want to have like the best pr copy of this film, um, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you, go get the Severn edition. Uh, it's got like a, it's got a soundtrack and like a, a lots, of, lots of bonuses. And the bonuses, most of the bonuses are ported over. Uh, but like uh, to like just to have the movie if you've never seen it before to own, that's definitely a good one to get. So there we go, guys. I have 15 titles all together. So I will go through them all quickly for you so let me make sure these don't fall 
So I have here the church, which uh, which Kirby Clark is a little bit mad, but it's a cool movie. Uh, so there is contraband. You gotta get it done right, and it's tough. But it, comes, when it, it, does, it works really nicely when it's not too little. Uh, there is all the colors of the dark with Sergio Martino. I have three Tinto Brass selections, the key, All Ladies Do It, and Frivolous Lola. I picked up one of the more serious Russ Meyer films, the, uh, the Seven Minutes. I grabbed the, you guys can say tell yourself, uh, for this one right here. It's a, it's a French film. It's a very famous film, but it was a very controversial film. Uh, I wanted to have it in my collection for a while. I, I finally do. Uh, that one didn't come out on Blu-ray. That's the only that one's only on DVD. This one is actually only on DVD too. Jaguar Lives. I do recommend it if you like kind of cheesy, fun action stuff. And grab it now because uh, yes, it actually has the original old school um, Arrow booklet in it, and I am so excited about that. Uh, when was this one done? I gotta find out. Uh, doesn't say. But yeah, these are the way Arrow booklets used to look like back in the back in the day, and to find like a release that still has those old school booklets, that that's super exciting to me. So as as a collector, that that definitely excites me. Uh, so Jaguar lives. I got I depend Skeet or Skeet, one of those. We'll go with Skeet, I guess, uh, from Revolver Films. Starring somebody from Top Buys. I'm not sure what Top Buys is, but no. I'll check it out. Uh, that's definitely more of a serious one. Kubrick Lover, that one is probably more your style. Uh, of course, I grabbed JD's Revenge. Long time waiting on this one here. Uh, it's one that I used to have back in the day in DVD. Definitely one that I do recommend people check out. Uh, a great film. Look at the cover art on this, too. It is just gorgeous. JD Waka. Back from the grave. Uh, Nico Mastrakis is hard to kill. Yeah, I love the artwork on these. I do. I really, really do. Uh, the fantastic Black Mama, White Mama with uh, Pam Greer. Stormy Monday, which definitely like tops me, tops it for me for like like is in like the really kind of sexy, cool artwork here. It's a neo noir, and I love neo noir films. Stormy Monday. Actually, I really did like Stormy Monday. Uh, I guess to each their own. But uh, it's Mike Figgs. If you uh, if you uh, like Mike Figgs, Figgs, Mike Figgs. If you like Mike Figgs, uh, I'll try to give you an example here, because he. Uh, so Ro cinematography by, by Roger Deakins, the guy that did like uh, you know for No Country for Old Men and uh, The Big Lebowski. Uh, and Mike Vegas did stuff like you know leaving Las Vegas, you know internal affairs. So if you like if you like that his style of film, you'll you'll definitely enjoy that great cast in Stormy Monday. And last but definitely not least, I finally have Volume Two for the Nakatsu Diamond guys. Uh, now these are limited editions. There's only like so many of these actually that are being done, and uh, I wanted to get them both. So now I have both the Nakatsu collection so when volume three comes out i'm caught up and i can actually just go out and buy volume three without having to worry i would have to go back and get volume two uh so uh, was exciting to get that and this is a uh, three disc set so basically a blu-ray and two dvds uh again a, a large booklet in here as well and uh it does have like a i think an interview with uh was it is it jasper sharp on this one here yeah so record video discussion with japanese cinema expert jasper sharp uh which you know which I expected for uh, for this one here, because Jasper Sharp is kind of one of the go tos when it comes to uh, to Japanese cinema. Uh, that's why I was really surprised with the last Japanese uh, UK, like Arrow release that I got that actually had like the Bloodthirsty Trilogy was Kim Newman, and I, I kind of expected Jasper Sharp to be, but I guess he's like more into the uh, into the old school than the Katsu stuff. So yeah, that's 15 releases and all. I don't think that's a bad haul for the stuff. I know you guys probably expected to see much more much more steeped in horror. Uh, there, but like there was, I did with with the church and uh, all the cars of the dark. For instance, those those were definitely horror. And JD's Revenge, in a way, is kind of like a black exploitation horror film. 
Um, definitely one of the uh, one of the ones that you want to have. You want to have like Black Hill. You want to have uh, Sugar Hill, uh, and you want to have JD's Revenge. Those are like three like black exploitation horror films. You know they got to be in your collection. They're they're if you like black exploitation, if you like horror, if you like the kind of combination of both, uh, those are you know those are ones that stand out. And of course, if you're uh, if you're into like you want to get like more uh, more deeper into that stuff and get into the actual social commentary of it, then Ganja and Hess as well, which I do think is actually a really good film. Um, a bit underrated, actually. But uh, but there you go. So what do you guys think? Did you guys get much from the Arrow video sale? Are you going to buy some stuff from the Arrow video sale? Are you guys waiting now that the Warren Archives 4 for 44 sale is happening right now? Uh, are you guys excited about that? Anybody like looking at the Warren Archives sale? But yeah, I, I can probably like bet that tomorrow... Yeah, that's that's me right now. See, I would love to do the Warner Archives. I would dive in forty-four dollars, but I can't even do the forty-four dollars. Can't even do four, and I really want like Hint. Hint has a list. We, me and Hint, have a huge list of Warner Archive movies that we want. Uh, we only recently bought some stuff. I haven't actually on this uh, in in this, uh, in this. I really I'm looking at them a lot. Uh, the, the the Japanese horror titles, and not just the horror titles, but like the Japanese titles in like overall. Uh, and I had like a bunch of them on my and kind of uh, on the short list. And if I would have been would have had like enough money to actually do a second run at the at the arrow sale, which I was kind of hoping I would, uh, but unfortunately uh, haven't been able to get like for the second for a second run. But uh, yeah, I would have definitely grabbed up some of those because I'm really curious about like some of those titles. They got some some have some great features on them, and some are just like some really different ones. There's some horror there. Catano films. Oh. So yeah, so you grab the you grab the few. Like I don't have any third window, so that the next sale they have, if they have that on those on there, I'm definitely gonna be grabbing some. Uh, then because I don't have a lot, like many, of, I don't have any of them. What I'll do is I'll grab a few of the DVD releases first. At four pounds, you can't you can't go wrong. Uh, if if it's if I really really like it, you know, down the road at another sale, I'll, I'll upgrade the Blu-ray. But uh, either way, it's it's good to have them in your collection. Uh, well, when I got the Tindall Brass stuff, I knew that I I did not need to have the Tindall Brass and Blu-ray. I knew that the DVD was going to be perfectly fine for, for the uh, for the films that the way that I wanted them. Wow, ten. So you yeah you kind of you went with them too. I go so <clears throat> I uh, I'm actually very curious. I I went with like a few of the you know like the shameless titles. I I wanted to really up my game when it came to my. Arrow like VHS releases. I guess you can kind of see in the background like some of my Arrow VHS like right there, and there's more down on the on, on a bottom shelf that you can't see. But I, I I've been wanting to up my Arrow VHS sorry my Arrow DVD collection for a while. I started buying a lot of Arrow DVDs originally. So Hin was really surprised <clears throat> when we started to do this do the sale, and I said you know this time. I'm gonna dive into the DVD section as well, because uh, she was like going off for 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 the Blu-ray, like Blu-ray, 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 except for Jag Williams, which is only on DVD. It's not a there's no Blu-ray of that one, um, not from Arrow anyway. So I uh, so we knew we were gonna grab that one. That was like one that we looked at. Natalia Pleasance, Chris Lee, Joe Lewis. Yeah, yeah, we're getting that. Um, and <clears throat> as cheesy as it is. I had to finally complete my tunnel brass. I got to get the Radley Mesker ones, uh, which wasn't in the sale, or I probably would have gotten those two. Uh, but I got to get the Radley Mesker films as well, because I do like that style of, of style of filmmaking, and I do think there's there's definitely like a a strong like a, you know for for that there. This is the one I'm actually very curious about. I might actually watch this one later on my own. Um, don't know a lot about this movie. So i uh, actually kind of curious. Has anybody seen this? Anybody at all? Most talked about controversial crime thriller of the year that came out, apparently. Which one archives movies would I buy? <clears throat> Good question. Because uh, I am a huge Warner Archives fan. Let's, go, let's dive into the Warner Archives because they got their... Sale going on right now. Actually, listed it there. So I go to my. But I have like we got a we've got on our on our 
Amazon. We've got like a huge list of like Warner Archives titles that that we that we want to. We got like nine like DVDs coming, but get getting them on Blu-ray would be incredibly awesome. So come on, let's go to my no, let's go to me. Oh, I so hate when I'm trying to do this. No, not add the story. So I'm trying to get this okay because I shared it to show him. Oh, they have so many good, so much good stuff here. Uh, stuff that I recommend for you guys, or stuff that I would get myself that I don't have. <clears throat> so that's that's two different lists altogether. But uh, four for forty-four, Innocent Blood. I I would definitely look the Hidden. I recommend the Hidden. I don't have the Hidden. It's one of my favorite movies from when I was younger. Uh, I actually have a story behind the Hidden, um, and uh, that's that's one that I that I really I really really love. Uh, I would definitely pick that up. I look into Innocent Blood. Uh, they got some great stuff here, man. Uh, Scarecrow with Gene Hackman is a really good movie. Uh, the Man with Two Brains. Good. The, I'm not sure if we got Green Slime or not. If we don't have Green Slime, we would definitely get that because we love these style of films. Uh, time After Time, uh, definitely a great release. I would love to have Alone in the Dark with Kim Darby, one of the first like horror movies I saw as a kid, uh, like on, on TV. And of course, there's a, he knows you're alone. I'm not sure if that's on Blu-ray here, but I would definitely love to have that one. Uh, my God, they got like every title on on there available. There's like so much good stuff here. Uh, I've got out of the past, but if you don't have it and you're a, and you're a film noir fan, I, I gotta say I strongly recommend Out of the Past. It, it's an amazing film with Robert Mitchum and Jane Greer. Uh, Dark Patch. I've got Night School coming, uh, the DVD edition. Uh, but uh, Night Moves is a good one. That's a fantastic film, actually, with Gene Hackman. Uh, I've got like a DVD of that one, the original DVD of that one. It's the only reason I wouldn't upgrade that one right away. Uh, Night School I got coming. Uh, I'm still waiting for that one to come. I've got The Hunger. That's one of the ones that I do have here. Uh, great release of that, by the way. Murder My Sweets, another fantastic film that I, you know, but I have not the one that, I, that I'd grab right away. But if you don't have it, definitely. Uh, Wolfen is here. Would I recommend one? When Dinosaurs Rule the Earth? Gun Craze is a fantastic one, Michael. Uh, uh, Don't Screw There is a fun film. If you got like the cheesy stuff, if you like the cheesy stuff, definitely go. Uh, I'm not. They got uh, Body Snatchers here. That's the, the 90s one. I'm actually kind of a fan of that film. Uh, it gets a lot of hate, but I like it. And especially after watching that Daniel Craig thing, uh, I really like the uh, the Body Snatchers film now. Uh, now, there's a lot of classics on there. Like, there's stuff that, that Hen would pick up. Like, uh, I'm not sure if she picked it up or not, but Black Scorpion, I know, was on her list. Uh, she may have got that one. Uh, Colossus of Rhodes is on our list. I know that much. Uh, Leatherface 3, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Whatever happened to Baby It might be, actually. Uh, like, there's so many here that, that I could choose from. Vision Quest is one I saw when I was a kid. When Dinosaurs Roared the Earth, I would definitely buy that. Do you see the cover, man? Just on that cover alone. Holy crap, who would not buy this movie? Thanks, Adam. Like I know you can't see it very good there, but you can just see the dinosaur there. That's that's that that's enough, man. Valerie Guanji is something I really want. Yeah, all the Bogie Bogart, you know, McCall discs strongly recommend it. Uh, you didn't like Vision Quest, I, but then I I'm gonna be honest with you. When I talk about Vision Quest, that's that's something from my youth. So I don't really know if it's actually a really good movie. It's just one I love. Uh, crazy for you, friends. It's a song. Death Trap. I love Death Trap when I was, uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of Chris Reeve. Music was great in that one. Uh, there's so much great stuff here, man. I'm, I'm, you know, it, it is it is overwhelming for me. World According to Garp is a movie I've always wanted to, I, I wanted to have, like, on, on Blu-ray. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's something, like, personal to me. Uh, but there's that, then you get the cheesy stuff, like Ice Pirates or World Without End. And, and, you, and you just, like, show down Little Tokyo with Brandon Lee and, you know, uh, Doc Savage I got coming actually I love Doc Savage uh, that's a really cheesy movie yeah, Van Lee Guanche yeah exactly it's a, From Hell It Came it's kind of a cheesy I think it's Tree Monster just something like that uh, one here that uh, that I don't think uh, that some people here don't like and that's Performance but actually that's here as well if you're wanting to dive into that film uh, Finian's Rainbow is my dad's favorite musical that's on here uh, the Sunshine Buys is a movie I watched over and over again. 
Did I ever watch Ragtime? I did, actually. It's been a long time since I've seen it, though. Tarzan. I would get any of the Tarzan releases if they're on here. I love Tarzan films. I need, yeah, that's why I mentioned the Kirby Clark because he didn't like it. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, any of the Tarzan stuff, is, uh, definitely. Like, even, like, the, they have, like, cool new Fire from the Manning Crowd is here. Uh, Broadway Babies. Uh, um, they have, like, newer stuff if you're into the new stuff. Yeah. Nicholas Rogue films, great stuff. Uh, famous, the famous Ferguson case. Uh, oh God, looking at this makes me so want like so many of these releases. Uh, it's Warner Archives is a company that because he didn't have a lot of features in them first. I was like, I somebody on here asked actually, see Wolf, very very good film actually, really good film. Busby 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 Berkeley, I I love Busby Berkeley. The host, the hot Harris. Don't know that one, I don't think. Maybe. Sir Louis Pasteur. <laughs> they had the Triffids. I need to own it, though. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I need to own person. Like, I can't be. <clears throat> There's so much, guys. I mean, like, I'm just like going through here and just like so many classic titles, like. So many great film noir, this animation on here, like newer stuff too, like like great westerns. Yeah, exactly. There's there's some fantastic westerns on there, <clears throat> just like regular films too, like Star Eighty, for instance, Casablanca. Uh, Casablanca's a fantastic film, which will I do own, of course, because you know that's where my better half was born. She's from Casablanca. Uh, I'm from Newfoundland. I have a much more boring like. Uh, <laughs> origin uh she's from the place where we you know the, where the bogey movie is based off of and to me i'm a i'm from the place where they made the rowdy man so there if you know what the rowdy man is you just get you notch up a cool cool notch on my on my cool cool meter uh cinema exiles from hitler to hollywood definitely See, uh, it is but i'll be honest with you i still want it i i, I I want all the Killer Bee. I've got two Killer Bee movies. I got the Bees and I got the Deadly Bees. So I, I would, I would definitely, you know, I've, I got way worse than the Swarm in my collection. I, and that's why I would, I would definitely get Marlowe, uh, James Garner. Thanks is uh, Philip Marlowe on that one. Uh, the Betsy, the Betsy is a personal one for me. Uh, Village of the Damned. I don't have the Warner like original release. I wish I did. Uh, I have the 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 remake. And I have like a, an old MGM double feature of like Village and Children, Children and Village of the Damned. But I've definitely got a. I'm not sure if she's seen it actually. Uh, she definitely looks for movies that were, were and shows that were filmed over in Morocco. Definitely one of the reasons that uh, uh, she watched Game of Thrones in the first place was that the second season, that was the second or third season, had like a lot of uh, had some film, some shots done in Morocco, done in Essaouira to be precise. A uh, place that we uh, we both spend a lot of time at when we go over there. It's like a it's a great like surfing uh, surfing kind of like a hippie type of uh, community. Great gelato there too, by the way. Uh, but yeah, I I could go on and on. There's like hundreds of pages here. I'm not joking. There are hundreds of pages. There's the Wonder Woman, the 1974. Like, uh, is it really? Yeah, the Kathy Lee Crosby Wonder Woman is here. So wow, I'm surprised to see that there. Uh, the cat the movie gay gay puri is uh is also listed here as well it looks like about 107 pages of like stuff um uh, everything from like newer stuff like crash to Le legends of the superheroes guys uh this is a really really bad uh tv film yeah it is like batman and robin of course they're older there and i'm not sure if that's the one there's two like superhero films that came out the, the like this consecutive nights really and uh, one of them basically was a roast. It was like one of those Dean Martin style roasts, except like not as funny. And with superheroes and villains instead of like, because uh, I guess it was a thing at the time. And then the second one was this like really cheesy one. Hey, Andy, how's it going? Uh, I, I did my Arrow stuff. And I'm, we're looking at this Pretty Maids all in a row. Uh, a Rock Hudson movie that I really did like. Um, again, uh, I think Kubrick Lover, you may find it mad. But I see I did like the Pretty Maids all in a row. Uh, Kubrick Lover does have good taste. Giant. That's a good movie for you. 
uh, are you guys all also you guys also looking at the at the Warner Archive sale as well? Is is it not just me? Well, the city sleeps. Uh, oh man, there's so much good stuff here. I could look on and on. I do apologize because I should be. I should. I gotta stop. <laughs> I gotta stop looking. It, it's a great sale. So guys, you might want to check it out. It's four for forty four, and that's four Blu rays. Um, damn, I wish I could get some of these. Uh, especially like stuff like. I wonder if they have it here. I wonder if they have. He knows you're alone. I love. He knows you're alone. That one's that one's actually more expensive. It's a DVD, but it's more expensive. But yeah, uh, great stuff. Yeah, if, and if you're a film noir fan, definitely of the past. Of the past is just an amazing, amazing film. If you've never seen it, I, I strongly recommend. It's one of those that I say is, is on. It's a, kind of like a must list. Anything over four to eleven. Oh. It's kind of like one of those Paul Frederick sales when you buy like the three shirts for ninety nine dollars, and then everything after that's like thirty three. Um, I work for a Paul Frederick actually, uh, but there's so many. Uh, I've worked for like a lot of clothing stores and stuff like that over the years. So when it came to like shirts and collars and all that stuff. Better in the film. I got the film noir pack actually, Adam. Uh, but if you don't have it and you just want to and you want to grab the uh, grab the release, Gun Gun Crazy is an amazing film. Uh, high on my on my noir list. The, actually, there's not just one. That's the thing. I do work for different companies, uh, so uh, that's why I'm always like, a, if you're somebody that can. Hundred dollars to get the free shipping. See, that free shipping doesn't work for me because I'm in Canada. Uh, but if you're in the United States, like, uh, oh, I, I, if I, I, I'll let you know if I had one. But I, we actually, I just work for a lot of different companies. That's uh, we it's outsourced to different stuff. So I, uh, you do not. Well, yeah, there's there's amazing stuff, amazing stuff. So guys, if you just came in, Warner Archives is has having a sale right now, four for forty-four. Uh, I, I do recommend it. Uh, Arrow Video sale is still going on right now. It's going on to the ninth. So if you haven't like dived into the Arrow Video sale that's going on right now, and to make it even like even worse on your pocketbook, One One Films has extended their sale as well. Uh, I think they were surprised at the at the level of like uh, like interest that they got in the sale. Uh, I'm taking some credit for that, damn it. <laughs> Uh, no, but my uh, good friend Brian from just the uh, just podcast. I'm sure definitely uh, when he when he tweeted out about the uh, the 101 film sale. I know some people like went in and uh, and grabbed that uh, grabbed up some stuff after that. Yeah, there's like a ton, guys. I mean, like you can just go through and you can find every. There's every Warner Archives, you know, features or no features. Uh, you know, if it's commentary, that's fantastic. And if nobody, ha if you don't have a Warner Archives film, I do have like one Blu-ray in my collection, so I'll just go grab it because uh, it's just right here. Right about here we go. So, ouch, that hurt a little bit. This is a Warner Archives release. You know, I got a couple on DVD, but this is my only Warner Archives Blu-ray release that I got. You want to they do uh, made-on-demand type things, but they do them well. It doesn't look like a cheap disc. So basically, this is what it looks like on the inside. So you can see there is artwork. It's not just a blank silver disc or anything like that. There you go. And this one here, by the way, does have a feature on it. It's like a commentary with Susan Sarandon and Tony Scott. Press, press this. I know that on their website, on there, they actually do use the MOD on on a, on a few of their titles. Uh, like kind of made on demand. 
So uh, I, I, was, I was unaware of that, so thanks. I'm Michael, I'm new when it comes to Warner Archives. This, this is my, you know, I've got a couple like DVDs. And this is my experience with Warner Archives, to be completely honest with you. I got like uh, oldies.com had a sale over Christmas. So we grabbed some Noir Archive DVDs because we can never get them, like a DVD or Blu-ray, around here. We only found it afterwards that there's import CDs that sells their stuff on Amazon CA uh, recently. And we did up a huge list of uh, stuff that we wanted to buy. And uh, to get like the amount of stuff that we want, sometimes we'll take the DVD over a Blu-ray just because we want it, we, we quantity. We want to get like more movies. We watch a lot and uh, a lot of movies in our collection. Uh, this is The Hunger. I do recommend this, by the way, if you like this, uh, this style of film. Uh, Catherine Deneuve uh, was utterly gorgeous. Uh, David Bowie and, of course, Susan Saran. Of course, another beautiful lady there. Uh, a very different film. Very, very different vampire film. Very, very unique. And I love the Warner Archives logo, i got to say, the Warner Archive collection. Hey, Scalder, how's it going? I got... Since I don't want to go through them all again, but I will... Do this though. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, Tony Scott directed uh, The Hunger. He was the director. That's why it's so beautifully stunning. Tony Scott is one of those guys that can do like a lot of really, really good like uh, work when it comes to that type of stuff. All right. So for anybody else that didn't see it, this is my haul from the Arrow sale. Oh, that should totally be my, my screenshot. Yeah, uh, 15 and all. Uh, oh, I'm so not rich. <laughs> hey, Stephanie, did you get anything from an arrow sale? Are you looking now, Stephanie, into the Stephanie Crawford? The lovely Stephanie Crawford from many podcasts, including Just the Dis, uh, the Screamcast, and check out her writing and, and follow her on Twitter as well. It's been a while since you've been in her stuff. Yeah, I, I grabbed a bunch of stuff. Yeah, Warner Archives is really getting good at it. Got your second order. Yeah, Scalder, here's the man that picked up like 40-something titles. Uh, you're like the Blu-ray hoarder of the, for, with the Criterion. Uh, I'm not sure if you, back in the day, uh, when a Blu-ray hoarder used to make a lot of videos on here, when he started, he got he did like a huge, huge like bunch of like... Uh, Universal Vault. Actually, I got a couple of those on DVD. Almost 60 now. So you got in again. You went in again because last time it was like 40-something. So you must have picked up a lot of stuff. But this is the... The not the not unusual... The more unusual, like, non-horror non like horror stuff, unless you want to call Daddy's Revenge Horror. So, yeah. Had to grab Stormy Monday, Black Mama, White Mama... Hard to Kill with Nico Ma by Nico Mastriakis, uh, J.D.'s Revenge, and of course the second volume to the... You're going to live carelessly. Uh, yeah, I grabbed up this, Stormy Monday, Sean Bean. I'm not sure if he dies in there or not. Come <laughs> back, Mama White Mama. The Katsu sets are fantastic. I actually like these. So, Hard to Kill, J.D.'s Revenge, the Katsu Diamond Guys. This is one they sent me, actually. This was kind of like a bonus, which I was, which I don't know. I don't know the film, so uh, really interested in seeing that. Got to be careful with these covers because they're shameless. All Colors of the Dark, the uh, shameless release of that. Contraband. I love that. I love this. I do love it. I'm such a kid. I love this lenticular blowing, up, blowing the brains out thing. The Church. Again, bought for this artwork. I may buy like the Blu-ray down the road, but I really would love that art. Jaguar Lives, which is awesome. And 
Steph just came in. It has the original old school arrow booklet in it. The old school booklets that they used to do. You can't get these anymore. This is awesome. <clears throat> no, actually, I didn't. Contraband is one I didn't have. Uh, I've got a lot of Fulci stuff, but I don't have contraband. And like in any release. So that was kind of cool. I've always wanted it, though. And I grabbed some for my Tinto Brass collection. So don't, don't judge me, but Frivolous Lola. You can judge me. All ladies do it. Yes, there's a bit of a, like finger censorship there. Yeah, all the major studios do have an MOD series right now. And that's really cool that they're doing that. The key. <laughs> the This movie here, who for reasons of, I'm not saying this, <laughs> I'm not reading the title. And uh, of course, Seven Minutes, the only Russ Meyer film I didn't own. <clears throat> hey, yes, all the Tino Brass films. Thank you. Do you have the Riley Metzger stuff? Um, Tenno Brass is actually I'm, I'm a big fan of Tenno Brass uh, I do like that uh, the, his, his style of filmmaking and it was like kind of what I consider like one of the kind of kind of true auteurs back in the day <laughs> going in for another order anything interesting that I should know about oh, there is a ton of like stuff out there guys uh, there are a ton of sales going on right now the one on one film sale uh, which which I got Brian's going to kill me I got Brian to go into into, into that sale Steph knows about it uh then there's the there's a Warner Archive sale just announced today. Uh, four films for forty four dollars. So tempting. One hundred and seven pages of films there, guys. One hundred and seven pages of films. Uh, there's a there's the there's the Arrow sale still going on. So that sale still is still going on right now. So there's like three like major sales I can think about just right off the top of my head that are going on at at this very moment right now that that tempt the hell out of me. I got like some cheesy stuff coming from 101. I've got some even cheesier stuff coming from from oldies. I've got a really big release coming from uh, that I can't say that I'm going to announce that I do want to say too. Oh, do I have some? Let me. I don't think I have you on my Facebook, do I, Steph? I know I got Brian. Uh, actually, I'm not as far. I, I'm not sure if it's North America. Let me just check. Uh, see the the I originally thought that Warner Archives was only in the U.S. So I looked at a. Uh, I went to the down to the bottom, and I went to customer service and basically looked at shipping and delivery. Right. So. U.S. domestic shipping, you know, free ground shipping after so much, uh, you know, time frame. And then it goes to international shipping. Uh, and international shipping is there. So basically, they talk about Canada. Uh, I guess we're, well, of course, we're international. And I guess Hawaii and places like that. So they do ship to Canada now. I thought that they didn't ship to Canada uh, before. Uh, they don't have tracking numbers to Canada. Hey, Reality. Uh, welcome, dude. Uh, but, like, the, the dude now shipped to Canada, so I'm actually really excited about that. They never used to ship to Canada. Like, I tried to order some stuff from them before, and I couldn't do it. And they do a lot of, like, uh, stuff like that. Like, yeah, like, yeah, the New Year's sale from, like, 101 Films. That's also on here as well. Just got to see something here. It's just going to take me a second. I'm still here. All right, let's find it. So I don't want to say it on here, but because I want to leave it as kind of a surprise. So, Steph, that's what I'm going to be unboxing late this month when it comes. <clears throat> Hope you don't mind, but I sent you <laughs> something there. <clears throat> and I'm super excited about it. It's something that I did not know I was going to get for Christmas. But apparently it's going to be on its way. Warner stuff on my Amazon wish list. Yeah, I know. You've got to, you've just got to watch it. Now, 44, 4 for 44, 
not too uh, not too bad. I uh, another time I would definitely pick up a bunch of this stuff, <clears throat> but I just got fifteen <laughs> movies come. I, I have nine like DVDs coming from all these, which I got for Christmas or before Christmas, one archive ones. I have a, a, a special like set that my, uh, a special release that my better half pre ordered for me that I had no idea about. Uh, that I, uh, that I want to like not say anything until I actually show it. Uh, like I actually unbox it here on the channel. I'm actually very excited about it. And, uh, I've been, I've been trying to keep very tight-lipped about it. That I had no idea was coming. But, uh, yeah. And so there's a few I've, I've still got coming. And if the Blood Island collection doesn't get canceled on me, uh, plus I'm going to be grabbing some... i got to grab a couple of Vinegar Syndrome ones for a... Uh, well, for something maybe doing with, with Brian, actually. <clears throat> on a in, a... in a future cast podcast, so... Hopefully, if I can get them and watch them, uh, so much to uh, all that stuff to do. You like the video? With Ma- Thank you. Uh, Cabin by Joni is that your second? Oh, just a disc. Just a disc sold me on Cabin by. I gotta get it. Like I was never like a huge. I like Kirsty. I was never a Cabin by fan. And second, William Castle said today he feels like going. Uh, I I gotta get this. Uh, I gotta get the William Castle set. I so gotta get them. Uh, I want the Blood Island set, and I did pre-order it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, you're not the first person to actually said that to me. I got the Chris Elliott. Uh, there was a show that used to come on TV, uh, and I don't remember the name of it right now. At least the Chris Elliott starred in it. And uh, when that show was on the air, I I, I got that a bit. I want the blood on set stuff. It's just, they keep saying, 2020, it looks like, oh yeah, like, I never really thought about it, but yeah, that is like, not 2020, actually, it's 2019 now. So it's like within the next three years. So probably 2021. Oh, you guys make me jealous. See, I ordered it and I had it pre-ordered on Amazon. And now it's just it's just lingering. It's not like shipped. It's just saying, uh, may arrive, it should arrive on January the 18th. So I'm hoping that the blood onset comes there. Because now, because here I am with like this. And if you like Blood Island, guys, right here. What, Black Mama, White Mama. Directed by Eddie Ramiro, the guy that directed the Blood Island films. So there's Steph. If you got the Blood Island films and you don't have Black Mama, White Mama by the same director of Blood Island films. I mean, I, I get the Chris Elliott thing all the time, actually. <laughs> Yeah, she accept, uh, Steph. Yeah, I just got your message. She actually really surprised me with uh, with that. Uh, I haven't li- I haven't told anybody on here yet, but uh, it was like I had this big list of like Christmas stuff. And I was uh, and she said, "There's one other thing, but I haven't told you." And it was just kind of ironic because we were looking at that website at the time. And she's like, you know, go into this, go into this one right here. And I said, no, that one's old. It's, out, it's sold out. And, you know, it's one that I that I kind of wanted. And the thing was that I didn't know. Uh, it's one of those like where she knew better than I did that it's something that I wanted because I kept it from her because it was expensive. Uh, and I said, you know, well, OK, I, I guess I'm going to mess out. Uh, but uh, she actually got up in like the middle of the night when when that started, and uh, and was the f- one of the first people to actually order it. So now it's just it's just a waiting game. But uh, super stoked. Anyway, guys, I have a lot of watching to do. In the last few days, I watched a few movies. Uh, by the way, thank you everybody that's watched the one that I did with Hind. Uh, we really really enjoyed that. It's going to be like a kind of an ongoing thing. We're not sure when we're going to do them. It's when she's feeling. Good enough when we watch the movie together. I won't. Sh- I still won't go. Damn it. She knows me. She doesn't know me. 
Yeah, we'll buy a new TV when we get the... I'll probably grab one in London. Uh, I want to get, like, for the new place, I've I looked at the... Like, I've seen, like, the dimensions of the condo and stuff like that. So, probably, I'm hoping, like, for around 65 inch, 70, somewhere around there. Probably around 65. That's kind of the sweet spot with uh, with, with a 4K. And I'm going to have to grab, like, a, uh, a, a couple new players, you know, a couple new region fully free players. So, it's going to be a little expensive when I first get to Morocco. That's for sure. Because I got to, like... The condo's pretty much got, like... Uh, got like all the stuff there we just got to get electronics but then like our own stuff because uh, we gotta like get the get everything straight away get everything done a lot of work uh but no it's fun it's fun it's fun work um it's uh it's you know let's us relax but yeah so there's a ton of sales going on right now guys there's if you got money left over for after christmas uh definitely uh, we may be headed, we're not quite sure yet, we may be going to the Ontario area in the uh, in the near future. We're waiting to hear back. Uh, she was, see, I was I was just, electronic prices, Morocco's actually not too bad, especially on some things, right? You know, you get the, get the AliExpress type prices. Um, you know what I mean. But, uh, you know, there's, no, they're actually, it's not too bad. Like, uh, the Casablanca Mall is pretty good. I got some good stuff there. That's where I got my Cloud Chabral set from, uh, the Arrow film set that was put out. I grabbed that there, and I grabbed like a few like westerns there as well. Now a lot of the stuff that comes from Mar Morocco, like film wise, it's it's French. It's like it's done. It's uh it's imported from Paris. Uh, so uh, I'll probably you know I'll have to like go to to London uh, to get some stuff, and I'm gonna get a box in London as well. So basically, I can like do get some stuff from it, like kind of like ordered from online and, and just sent to uh, to a box in London. And I can just fly over and grab it. Uh, you know. So many times here, I've got like a, we've got like a friend. He's got a cousin in uh, in London there, and uh, he can bring stuff over as well. <laughs> it pretty much is. Uh, when I say AliExpress, I'm talking about like the uh, there's a thing like Medina, and like it has this like like great stuff, and has like a lot of this like kind of like cool stuff and great foods and, and like some knockoff stuff as well. Actually, I don't think so. Not as far as I know. I haven't really looked into it. I do think that like there's certain ones like the Amazon's like UK or something like that may actually ship over there. But I also worry about uh, things like, uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna I'm gonna be honest. Like when it comes to certain films, I wonder like a bit censorship wise over like over there, right? Uh, so you know it's okay if you're taking things through, but like I, I I don't know what the postal service is like. So I'd rather I I trust me. <laughs> to uh to uh to go and get that stuff oh yeah and and you know amazon has done a lot of really really good stuff it's just that the brick and mortar stores have to keep putting in these uh these type of releases they they do i mean we we cannot uh let like the brick and mortar like media die out because this as soon as we do then we're stuck then we only have online and the more our options are limited, the more expensive it is going to be for us to get these releases. If you can only buy Am you only buy Screen Factory at your local at, at your Amazon, then your Screen Factory that's 24, 20, you know, 22, 24, 28 dollars there is going to go up to that 36 dollars that you saw at your brick and mortar store, um, and sometimes even more than that. They, they, you know, they've got wiggle room; they can do that. Uh, I do think that no, well, movie theaters. I definitely say will we'll always be there. Yeah, that's the thing, Steph. Like, that's why every time I go to Halifax, I make make it a point. I will take a certain amount of money, and even though some of the releases I know are going to be more expensive than if I were to go and grab them online, I go to my local Sunrise Records there, and they bring in stuff uh, like Arrow, Scream Factory, MVD Rewind, like a, a lot of different like companies. And uh, they got like a small section of them there, like right in the corner, which is it's, it's rapidly growing. And I was one of the guys that uh, that bought that. It is. It's, it's a really uneven landscape right now, and and it's kind of scary as a collector. It's great. It's fantastic, and like everything seems to be at your fingertips. You can just get something to come in the mail, uh, but you gotta like be concerned about like how like how it's gonna go in the future. We've already seen the like Scream Factory, and which I do still think Scream Factory like they've they've made some mistakes, and that there's some things that I'm not quite great on but I do think they do put out some really great quality releases and uh you know obviously the it's gone up in price with a lot of this stuff I just watched It's Alive Larry Cohen's It's Alive last night and uh that movie took me on a roller coaster of emotions it really did uh I remembered it like but I didn't truly remember it uh 
that's I love going to the EU because you know what happens when I go to the UK? I get back my, my tax when I when, when I leave. Uh, I go, I, I buy a bunch of stuff and I, I bring my receipt. And luckily, I'm buying more and more like physical meat, as you guys know, especially recently. And I'm watching more. Uh, if you have not got the It's Alive set yet, uh, guys, De Katana, you know, Steph, Ready, like, uh, Kubrick Lover. If you have not got the, the It's Alive set from, from Scream Factory, it is amazing. Uh, just, just the right amount of feature when it comes to, uh, to Larry Cohen. Uh, plus, there's also like some commentaries as well. But It's Alive is such a good movie. You got it? Did you like it? Have you watched it yet? Uh, great, great presentation of the film. Uh, and I forgot how good that movie was. It would have been so easy to make just a regular, like, like just a killer baby and like a jump scare and a slasher slasher type of movie where just you got you got a monster kind of a just a monster thing yeah uh but they didn't just go with that like the we get to see it from all points of view and they really they kind of dive in without like being like like too blatant they really dive into the emotions that that the people around them feel that the parents feel like uh, trying to keep it from their keep it from their their son uh trying to like trying to get a sense of normalcy when they're talking to other people uh the way that the that the father tries to react the way that he tries to be more stern and and at first he doesn't care like he wants to be the one to uh, to take out the monster type thing it it broke my heart uh it, it really did and uh like the performance by andrew dugan and the and the performance by uh oh god i can't remember the, the the actress's name but she she was incredible as well and uh you know she skirts on the edge of madness and, at sequences in that film and if you've not watched it's alive by larry cohen I, I strongly recommend it it's a great film uh the, the trilogy actually is really good uh it, it lives again it was the it was the sequel one uh i kind of remember that one uh, it's a it's been a while I, there's a swimming pool sequence in that i think if i remember correctly and uh i remember really strongly like uh the island of island of uh of the alive because it's the last one i saw in there yeah that's the thing Cohen layers the films. Cohen is one of those guys that uh, that puts in a lot. There's a lot of the human condition in uh, and in Cohen's films. There's a lot of like you know. There's definitely a lot of like uh, looking at like putting a thing back on. Uh, have I seen that one? Have I ever have I listened to that one? I I haven't. I don't know if I have. I thought if I haven't, that's one I missed out on. I will listen to it tonight if I haven't. Uh, I love the Screamcast. Uh, I've been. I've been following the Screamcast a, a lot, like like Jets of Discs, since you know, since the inception. Um, I knew when they were like basically just when they were doing Scream Factory stuff, and that was kind of like that's what it was. And when when Steph came into the Screamcast guys, uh, that's that's a podcast. Uh, then it clicked. Uh, it it just literally clicked that that magic that I like. There, there the show was great. Uh, but when Steph entered it, 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 it was just, it was, it was perfect. It was a perfect balance. Uh, same, like I've, I love the stuff. Like when you're, uh, when you do work with, uh, with, with Brian on, on just the disc, you, you just, you got, got a really good rapport. Stephanie is on the, the Jets of this podcast. She's been on Screamcast. There's a couple other podcasts you're on this year too, as well. Cause I actually ended up like signing up for more podcasts this year than I normally have. Uh, because you, you, you've expanded stuff that I listen to, uh, scream addicts. I'm pretty sure Seth is on that as well. Um, uh, and, uh, you guys want to know the, the podcast I listen to? Uh, it's true. Actually. Um, I listen to, uh, I listen to shockwaves. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows that one. Uh, that is, that is, well, Rebecca McHenry, Rob Galuza and Eric Kane, who works with Brian on, uh, on something called pure cinema, which is really good, by the way. Uh, yeah, I listen to just the discs, which is the one that Brian does with, uh, and most of the time, I think with Stephanie's almost like is almost like a regular, more, most regular co-host for that one. Uh, I listen to screencast, uh, again, one I've been following since the beginning, supporting characters, uh, scream addicts. Yeah, I, I got a few. There, there's a few more on my. Uh, I have some that are on my iPhone and some that are on my iP uh, iPod. So on my iPod, sorry, it's on my on this right here, my iPad. And depends on like uh, what I do is I keep so many on each so that if one of my so if I got one charger, uh, then uh, I'm charging one and I'm listening on the other. So uh, I'm always 
at night, I'm always listening to podcasts. So that, that's kind of my thing. So thank God Stephanie's around. <laughs> or I'd be, or I'd have to like do something like read in the middle of the night. Uh, Empire Film Podcast. I don't know that one. I'll check into it, Scalder. Bill Ackerman. Yeah, I agree. I have, I had this, I had to move because I'm not going to lie. What happened is like, I was, I do this thing and I do this all the time, right? I, I lay down on my, uh, on my feet and, uh, now that whole tingling sensation. I saw some, I haven't listened to the commentary yet. I really got to listen to the commentary. Everybody tells me that's great. I got to get caught up on some commentaries. I, uh, that's like things I've found that I really like lately in like uh, in feature wise. I love visual essays. Uh, I love visual essays. Uh, commentaries, fantastic. Honestly, what's your favorite like feature on like uh, on a on a Blu-ray or DVD? Do you have something that you look forward to when you see it on there? That that like you're like okay, I gotta buy this release. Is it like under like a making of like going a feature length documentary like an Urban Legends, or uh, or maybe you like you like the commentaries like they'll have there for like for the John Carpenter films. Or if you're like me and you love the visual essays that you see them do on, on releases like that Arrow did and like Snaps did for their release of Tenebrae, they did an amazing Jallo one. That which would I say the feature like Jallo documentary on that. There's actually if you're a fan of Jallos, uh, Severin has a uh, all the colors of Jallo coming out, three to set. Uh, it has like uh, for over four hours of Jallo trailers. Uh, it has like a uh, oh nice release by the way, Scholar. Uh, it has another like 90 minutes of like creamy trailers, uh, which is which is a genre I'll talk about on my channel in the in the near future actually, and as a, a bonus CD of like uh, of like different like tracks from Jello films and stuff like that. So yeah, and a documentary and a full like documentary as well. So that's one that I'm looking into. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there right now. Uh, one thing I that I really like to have is the Laura Gemser bundle. Yeah, I don't laugh at me. It's, it's Severin put out this bundle with that. It had like uh, last kind of like Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, which I don't have the the Severin release, and I do want that. Uh, it has uh, Vaughn's in Women's Prison. It has a, a Laura Gimser pin and a Laura Gimser T-shirt. Uh, and I'm a Gimser fan. I really am. Uh, I'm I'm so excited. But like I'm a Emmanuel fan. I uh, grew up with those when I was too, probably too young to be watching the Manuel films I was definitely watching the Manuel films I didn't know like their place in movie history when I watched them I thought oh their girls are cute uh, I wasn't aware of like you know how important it was in like cinema and like uh, as in like the kind okay, the women's movement as well but that that's stuff I would find out later on but uh I just thought at the time Sylvia Crystal and, and Lauren Gemps were, were extremely attractive women but uh I had to learn you had to learn somehow <clears throat> But yeah, there's so much great stuff that's uh, that's out there right now to choose from. Almost too much. No, there is too much. <laughs> yes, the Emmanuel ones are coming out in. Uh, is it Kino? I think it's Kino, right? The first three on uh, are coming out from Kino, uh, which is kind of the Emmanuel, the Sylvia Crystal trilogy, actually. Are uh, the first three. And start watching. Yeah, that's the thing. But I found that in the last since you know late 2018, early 2019, guys. I've been watching more than ever. Ah, uh, don't forget about it. Yeah, actually, true. Lady, young Lady Chatterley. Next, before you know, we'll be talking about the, like the Xander uh, Hollander stuff and all that. Xavier Hollander. What's that? God, what's her name? Happy Hooker, right? I remember those. Huh. I thought I had one of those, but I guess I don't. Yeah, there are so many good deals, and they keep tempting us with stuff. Come on, guys. It's just after Christmas. The books are on sale as well. The, how are the Arrow books, by the way? I don't have any of those. Yeah, I, yeah, I was actually just... I got that. I haven't wa read it yet. I actually got it... Got it kind of got tagged to read because I was at work when I saw it. Um, I do want Meteor features. I don't think we lost a lot, though, when it comes to that. Like... How many times, like, if you, Steph, you got, like, Tim Lucas on your, on your Facebook? Like, how many times do you see, like, like that he's doing another commentary out there? So there's still, like, releases with a lot of great commentaries. But there's, you know, there's a lot of newer movies that you're not seeing it so much with. But I think that what we're getting right now is that uh, they're putting more focus 
is being put into uh, into the older stuff. Uh, so you're getting like newer stuff. This is like what 2016, 2017, right? So this stuff, you know, I had this one has features, has a few features, but a lot of the newer ones and. Uh, I want that cult cinema book. I think it's sold out, right? It definitely is an addiction. But like the the newer stuff, you're not getting as many. Uh, like if I looked at the uh, any of the, I guess the Conjuring and stuff like that, I'm guessing they're not going to have a lot of features on them. But like if I look at like if I want like Last House on the left or uh, or look into one of the older things, then yeah, it looks like that people are working towards that. Oh yeah, Tim Lucas is definitely great when it comes to the commentaries and if anybody doesn't have this this is awesome I need to get like a mic that can just like it's not such stuck to me this here is a set that was put out by uh, Barrel a lot of people passed up on, on this because, uh, you know, it's just like a kind of fun, cheesy little movie set. I like four different like versions of a film. But what's on here that's that's really incredibly amazing, and it's done by Tim Luke. It's a three-part thing they did for Video Watchdog and uh, made a video version of it. Uh, and it's a visual essay called The Trouble with uh, Titan Revisited. Uh, it goes in depth, like, and it goes, I think it goes way over 90 minutes. Uh, talking about all the different versions of this uh, of this film and it is beautifully 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 done yeah exactly that's the thing it's it was it was one of the things that made me fall in love with the visual essay what was was tim lucas and this one on bloodbath and then i started watching like the stuff that like try horse would put out and um kate ellinger uh kate ellinger just so many great ones there when it comes to uh that when it comes to the uh to these releases arrow puts a lot of work into the visual essays and if you don't have like the uh like the synapse like tenebrae definitely recommend it great stuff there as well yeah <laughs> that's it see when i when i showed brian the 101 film sale i was like your wife is gonna kill me your spouse is gonna kill me but here's uh this, here's another sale and I get that a lot. It's like my 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 better half is going to kill me, uh, but I, I I just bought a movie <laughs> because you you tweeted something or you or you showed it on one of your videos. So yeah, I, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but it's this this is my addiction. Yes, that's true. So it's a movie club. It can't be it can't be just hand put on one person. We are all enablers here. We're like the worst twelve step like group ever. We're like yeah. If this was a twelve, if this was a twelve like step group, we'd all be passing each other drinks right now. That's what we'd be doing because that's the type of group we are. And but you know, I got my bubbly so. It's so weird. If you watch the channel for a while, the progression of this drink, the twelve step sale, yeah. <laughs> oh. I came out like hating this drink, like it being the only thing that I had left in the house to uh, to drink, and I was like having it here just so I could like yeah, grapefruit. Yeah, right, grapefruit sparks sparkling water, and now it's like it is in every single video I do. I actually genuinely like the drink. It's I guess it's what you would call an actual acquired taste. But. With that being said, you know what time it is, guys? It is time for me to take all this stuff upstairs, do the walk of shame, because I uh, I gotta watch at least one movie before I go to sleep every night now. I, I do that every night before I go to sleep. I watch a movie, I listen to a podcast every night before I go to sleep. So tonight, I'm not sure. I, I, I kinda wanna revisit some Tindall Brass stuff, but I kinda wanna watch the second It's Alive movie. But I want to space it out a bit because I was really emotionally drained uh, from the first It's Alive. Uh, I'm going to look back at this stuff because you guys are like giving like suggestions and hints and stuff. So I'm going to end up buying more stuff too. Oh yeah, by the way, if you also, because I am definitely an enabler, Vinegar Syndrome's uh, sale. <laughs> that, see, that's not narrowing it down when it comes to Tintal Brass. 
every movie is a butt woman movie with tinto brass just saying but no i like his i love the style of a uh, of film that he does uh but uh <laughs> it's true like, it's like it literally is in his name it's like <laughs> tinto brass it's like literally what he's obsessed with is in his name it, it's it's like bert i gordon uh <laughs> <laughs> you know, he like he does all his movies with these gigantic things. You know, it it was it was prophesied to be the you know they they could not get out of it. That was that was in their name. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, yes, the Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, they actually announced Bloody New Year, uh, which I think I mentioned on the channel last time, and which is uh, not coming with the uh, four January packs. Actually, on its own, I've seen that Bloody New Year VHS case so many times, and and, and I and I want it. So I need, I need to get Bloody Naked because <laughs> I don't think I've actually seen the film. I, I, I looked at it and I, I'm kind of remembering it, but I don't think I've seen it. Thank you guys so much for coming in tonight. Uh, I, I am Aaron. Uh, Party's uh, right on. So exactly. You guys are the, are the movie club. Uh, and honestly, you guys are what makes this rock. I'm just along here for the ride. Have a great night, guys. Have a fantastic weekend. If I can do it, I will, uh, I will try to... Uh, to get like another uh, another video tomorrow if possible. Uh, great, thanks, Steph, Michael, uh, Kubrick lover, everybody. You are awesome. I will see you next time here at the movie club. Tea time.